Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now today I'm back with another game collection video. This time I'm gonna show you my entire PlayStation 2 game collection. In this video, you're gonna see exactly why I think that the PlayStation 2 is probably my favorite game console of all time because there are so many awesome games released for the system across every single genre. And at the moment I have over 340 games for it, and that includes many of the common titles as well as some of the stupid expensive ones. Let's take a look. Now I'm gonna start with some of the heavy hitters here. These are the games in my collection that are worth more than I would probably expect. And the reason why I'm kind of surprised is because I bought almost all of these so many years ago that they weren't expensive when I first bought them, but today, well, they're somewhat collectible. And, you know, for the most part, for good reason. I do remember buying Blood Will Tell man, must be five, seven years ago, I'm guessing, on a uh, recommendation from somebody who he was like, hey, you should check out this game. It's a total hidden gem. And they were right. Also, Rad is one of those games that was exclusive to the PlayStation 2. And it's just so different than any other game that I've ever played before. Uh, I'm really glad I was able to get that early on because I like that game a lot. And then Silent Hill 3 was the first Silent Hill game that I ever played, and man, it blew me away. I know it's probably not a lot of people's favorites. A lot of people like Silent Hill 2 more, but I started on Silent Hill 3, and I remember so many moments of that game just blowing my mind at the time. It, it's, it's a special place in my heart. And then God Hand is just one of the best, most fun, beat-em-ups ever made. And again, it's it's exclusive to the PlayStation 2. Uh, it's a must-own. And then moves us over into RPGs because two of the more collectible RPGs are in this screenshot right here. Uh, Wild Arms Alter Code F and then also Wild Arms 5. I think it's probably for two different reasons there. Now, the very first Wild Arms I ever played was actually the third game, and I like this series a lot because, you know, it's it kind of reminds me a little bit of Trigun a little bit. I love the anime Trigun, and so this is kind of the, uh, I don't know, the Japanese RPG version of it. So it's cool to have all of these in the collection for sure. But I wonder if Wild Arms 5 is collectible because you didn't really hear much about it at the time. I mean, I could be wrong, but this might actually be a little bit of a late release for the PlayStation 2. And I don't think it came out in any other system at the time. So I'm glad, again, I picked this one up early. Another game that's really sought after on a PlayStation 2 and has really gone up in price is the third game in the Xenosaga series. So you see all three of them here, plus I also have that movie DVD in the center there. Now, when this series first came out, I loved it. I loved it because, I guess because, you know, it's 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 mechs, it's space, it's, uh, it's something a little bit different than what was the norm at the time. Plus, the story is just absolutely epic. Um, so I definitely loved the original Xenosaga. The second game was, was okay. They changed things up a little bit, but then I, I feel like they got back to it and kind of wrapped it up nicely in the third game. So love this series. And then here's another series of role-playing games I really enjoyed on the PlayStation 2. That, of course, is the Shadow Hearts series. Now, I believe this series got its start originally on the PlayStation 1, but you see the three releases here that follow that on the PlayStation 2. And for me, I really like Shadow Hearts Covenant as well as the third one there, Shadow Hearts from the New World. These RPGs are just unlike any other I've ever played before. They have really quirky and personable characters, you know, characters that really stand out. Plus, I love the turn-based combat system because it has this thing called the Judgment Ring, which has this timing associated with it. So it's, it's a mix of real-time and also turn-based, and 
Very memorable. I, I love this series. I want to go back and replay it. There were a bunch of Shin Megami Tensei role-playing games released for the PlayStation 2. You see six of them here. Now, most people jumped into the franchise when Persona 3 was released. Also, Persona 4 was very popular at the time as well. But as you can see, there are many more experiences to be had in this franchise. I will say I absolutely love the visual graphic style of these games. They, they're very unique. Uh, they have an edge to them, which I really like. And of course, if you're going to talk about role-playing games, well, you got to talk about the Final Fantasy series. I originally played Final Fantasy X on the PS2, and yeah, I know it's not considered one of the better ones, but at the time, I did like it a lot. I, I'm not entirely sure why. I've, I've tried to go back and replay it, and yeah, it, it's got some rough elements there. Uh, I did not like X2 or 10-2 very much at all, but I really did like Final Fantasy 12. I thought that was a great game. And of course you see here that I have the two Kingdom Hearts games. Here's an example of two different versions of the same game, obviously Champions of Norath. Now, often people ask me, you know, do I collect the greatest hits versions? And to be quite honest, yes. I mean, do I love the big red banner at the top? No, I do not. But at the end of the day, I don't really care. You know, I'm not going for a complete set of, of PS2 games. That would be insane. So I don't really care if I have one version or the other. Uh, I think the reason why I have two of them is just simply because over the years, I would get a lot of games and this one just happened to be included there. That's why I've got two. It is just incredible how many RPGs came out on the PlayStation 2. That is definitely one of the things that was really fun about it when it came out at the time. You know, every type of RPG you could think of was on the system. And then, you know, going back and collecting for it today, again, it's like if you are into that genre of games, there is no shortage of things to play on the PS2. It's fantastic when it comes to RPGs. And here are two of my favorites at the time. I loved these two X-Men Legends games. You know, this was a time whenever it was kind of unusual to get an RPG based on the Marvel Universe. And these games were just so cool, so much fun. Top down, they mixed in a little bit of, I would say Diablo style combat, but then they, they also were deep into the, the X-Men and the Marvel Universe. I love going around and collecting all of the comic book covers. Moving on now to something a little bit different. So I have these three games here and at face value, they don't look like they would be related at all. But actually, each one of these is part of the same franchise. So the first game there, I believe it's called Choroku. So this is a franchise that actually has been released in Japan for many years over several different console generations. And essentially what they are, they're kind of hard to describe, but it's kind of like a car RPG uh, style franchise. They're very unique, very interesting. But the reason why I think this is kind of interesting is because you can tell that the marketing departments had no idea how to actually reach out and make sense to like say, you know, a North American buyer, a North American customer here, because they kept changing it, right? So you have Tiroku there, then you have uh, Everywhere's Road Trip, and then the next one's called Seek and Destroy. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. If you see these right here, you may not realize that they're all related, but they're actually pretty fun, very interesting, cool games. Next up, I'm gonna show you some survival horror games, starting with the Fatal Frame series. You have the first three of them right here. Now I jumped into the series, I think like a lot of people, when the second game came out. It seems like there was a lot of buzz about the second game. And I, I was fully in on this because it's a little bit different than everything else because it deals with this camera, camera obscura, I believe is what it's called, where you don't really fight the, the ghosts and the evil creatures in this game normally like you would in other games. Instead, what you do is you take a picture of them with this really weird camera, which will then stun them. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of weird and different at the time. I remember that it had this kind of like haze or fuzz that would be on the screen, almost like kind of like an old movie. So very atmospheric games for sure. And then here's some other survival horror games I played at the time, including The Thing. So that was a game based around the movie franchise, which was actually better than you would expect. And then the other game I wanna mention here is Evil Dead, A Fistful of Boomstick. 
Oh my God, Paul and I would play this game so much. We were, well, we still are really big fans of the Evil Dead franchise and it was awesome to have Bruce Campbell in this game, you know, going around with all of his, his quips and his quirks and his sayings. Yeah, it was pretty pretty cool game. Not, well, okay. Yeah, it is a cool game. It's not a great game, but it is fun. Hey, I think I just found a cure for ugly. As well as some more survival horror games. Now, a couple of these I would probably consider to be somewhat hidden gems that, you know, the vast majority of people are not aware of, especially Cold Winter, which is a game that uh, my buddy Reggie introduced me to. That's a pretty cool game. As well as Extermination and then also Disaster Report. Uh, just again, you know, this is this shows just how versatile the PlayStation 2 is. And if you're gonna talk about survival horror, of course you've gotta mention Resident Evil 4 and specifically the chainsaw controller. I just love how over the top and silly this thing is. I mean, you know, it's not really practical. It's not a great controller. I don't think you'd ever want to actually use it as one, but it's amazing that it got built. It's so cool looking. A couple of years ago, I took a trip to Spain and while I was there, well, you guys know me, I'm gonna do some game hunting and I went to a local Madrid game store and I saw all of these Evangelion PS2 games that I'd never seen before. These didn't come out in North America and I basically just bought them all. Now, I don't necessarily know if any of these are very good or not because I can't really understand them. <laughs> <laughs> but it, as you can see here, I didn't necessarily pay that much for them. It was really just because I'm such a fan of the anime that I wanted to buy them and I was so shocked and excited to see them there. But it did kind of kickstart my desire to at least look into, you know, some of the PS2 imports, including these, which are all PAL games. And these actually I can play and do understand. I actually did a video on my YouTube channel probably maybe six months ago now, uh, covering a bunch of these. And there's some definitely hidden gems in here. I mean, there's there's some cool games that we did not get in North America that they got in other parts of the world. And uh, again, that's one of the fun things about the PS2 is because it was so successful that there are games that you've never heard of before. And that's part of the joy of collecting for the system because again, it's like you get to dig in really deep into the catalog and discover something new. Moving on, one of my favorite aspects of collecting for the PlayStation 2 is that there are a bunch of proper light gun games released for the system. And if I think about it, this might actually be the last generation of consoles that got real light guns released for it. Uh, on the PlayStation 2, you had the amazing Gun Con 2, which I think is one of my all time favorite light guns. And there are several games that were released for it. And it's one of the reasons why I will always have a PS2 set up in my game room because I do love this arcade experience. It was during this generation where everybody got deep into Guitar Hero. I remember playing the original Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero 2, 3, and all of the, the other versions they came out almost pretty much every year. But man, at the time it was groundbreaking, it was awesome, and I love these games. All right, moving on to some first person shooters. Now, I think that this generation of first person shooters was pretty creative at the time. Now, it started off where a lot of them were kind of historical first person shooters like you see here with the Medal of Honor series. I have obviously Frontline and then you have the one in the Pacific and the European Assault as well as the Call of Duty series here, which again was, you know, more historical. But then you had Deus Ex ported over to the PS2, which is something that I never thought would actually be possible. And, you know, to be quite honest, it's not really a great port today, but I did want to point that out because a lot of people don't realize that Project Snowblind is somewhat of a spiritual sequel to that. It's not technically a Deus Ex game, but it originally started life as one and they decided to change the title of it. Also during this time, you got some excellent James Bond first person shooters. Uh, Agent Under Fire and Nightfire are still some of my favorite James Bond games of all time. And then you have Black, which was created by Criterion Studios, which made Burnout, which we're gonna talk about in a bit. 
but that's a really cool first person shooter as well as Red Faction 1 and 2. Now I originally had the original Red, Red Faction, can't find it for some reason, probably lost in the move, but Red Faction 2 is really cool. Those were notable because they had destructible environments and that was their, their big selling point. And then who could forget the Time Splitter series? Listen, Paul and I, during this era, during this time, we would play Time Splitters 2 every single weekend for hours and hours and hours. I still think that game still holds up today. It's, it's a masterpiece. It is so much fun. And then who could forget the Grand Theft Auto series on the PS2? It really came into its own during this generation, don't you think? I remember playing Grand Theft Auto 3 for the first time when that came out and being blown away by the freedom that that game gave you. I remember just laughing at all the crazy stuff you could do in that game. It seemed so edgy. It seemed so wrong at the time, but the game just lets you just go completely nuts. And then they followed it up with Vice City, which to this day, I still think is my favorite, uh, you know, setting for the Grand Theft Auto series. Obviously I'm an eighties kid. I loved its, its Miami look to it, that eighties style. The eighties radio stations were so amazing. So I have very fond memories of these games right here. And of course, I want to mention the two really excellent Metal Gear Solid games that came out on the PS2. Uh, like so many other stories in this video, I remember the day that I played and finished Metal Gear Solid 2. I don't know if I actually understood it at the time, but uh, it was very memorable because I do really like stealth games. And then of course you have Snake Eater, the third game as well, a game that I didn't really get into when it was originally released. It was actually the, the 3DS version that kind of got me sucked into that game. Uh, and then you have the two special editions next to them. It was during this generation that you started to see a bunch of retro game compilations being released and I bought them all. I loved all these things because yes, I like playing the latest and greatest games, but you guys know that I'm also a retro gamer at heart. And so it was really cool to get these big compilations from Atari, Activision, Capcom, Midway, Taito. It just went on and on and on. And there were some very unique ones released at the time. It was really, really fun to collect these. During this generation, you saw a bunch of movie and TV licensed games, and obviously a lot of them came out on the PlayStation 2. You see a bunch of them here. Some of them better than others, I would say. Some of the standouts for me definitely are the Lord of the Rings games that came out. Those are kind of like beat em up slash RPGs. Also, the Starsky and Hutch game is surprisingly awesome. Obviously, Simpsons Road Rage. That is actually a really cool kind of GTA clone, sort of open world. And then the Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. That's a surprisingly good game too. As well as Snoopy versus the Red Baron. This game came out of nowhere, but it's really, really fun. We also got a ton of great Star Wars games during this generation. It was it was awesome to see. It was like Star Wars was back. I mean, so many great games here, including Battlefront 1 and 2, as well as The Force Unleashed, and a bunch of great Lego games. Uh, Jedi Starfighter was, was a decent game, but then we got kind of a sequel to Pod Racer there called Racer Revenge. And then Super Bombad Racing is a Star Wars kart racing game that isn't half bad. Now let's go ahead and get into some third person action games, starting with the two Gungrave games that I originally played on the PlayStation 2. These are, I don't know if these are actually anime inspired or if the video game came out first and then they did the anime, but they definitely have that anime vibe to them. Completely over the top, a little repetitive, but they are, they're, they're fun and brainless. And then you have some iconic games released on the PlayStation 2. Of course, you have the Ratchet and Clank series. You have the Jack and Daxter series, of which I'm missing the first one for some reason. Must have lost it in a move, it's weird. But then also the Sly Cooper series, which every single one of these is just absolutely iconic. It's 
It reminds me of great times playing on the PlayStation 2, especially the Ratchet and Clank series. Those first three games are some of my all time favorites as well as the SOCOM series. I've talked about this in the past. Uh, SOCOM 2 is definitely in my top five games on the PlayStation 2. I think it's an absolute masterpiece. I still think it's really fun to go back and play that game today, even though the graphics haven't really held up, but the gameplay is rock solid. This is one series that I would love to see Sony eventually reboot. Bring it to the PS5, please. And one thing I love about the PS2 generation is that a lot of developers, big developers, took a lot of risks creatively with creating new games, new, new franchises on this system. And you see six of them right here. And I just think that they took chances. They took risks. They, again, were very creative during this generation and we as gamers benefited from it. So it's one of the big joys about collecting for the PS2 today and going back and replaying them. They're just so much fun. They're so quirky and interesting. Unfortunately, not a lot of shooters were released during this generation, especially in North America, but you see four of them that I have here in my game collection. And each one of these actually is pretty good. So. Uh, I probably should dive a little bit deeper into Japanese imports because I'm sure they probably had twice as many as these, if not three times as many, but these are the ones I have and I like them. And then how can I not talk about the franchise that actually got me excited to get a PS2? I had a really good friend who had the SSX game and it was something I couldn't get on PC. And so it was like, oh man, I have to get this console to play this awesome game. Now, what's amazing about it is that they actually followed it up with two sequels that are even better. SSX Tricky is iconic. It took everything that was great about the first game and, and just dialed it up to 11. And then they perfected it with SSX 3. I've mentioned it before, but SSX 3 is probably my all time favorite PS2 game. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense to most people, but I still think it is a masterpiece today. There is nothing wrong with that game. It's flawless. Execution impeccable. And then here's some more games that I originally discovered on the PlayStation 2. Obviously these are also some heavy hitters. Uh, just some games that, again, will always be associated with the mighty PS2. It was during this generation where I feel like the Tomb Raider series started to get kind of rebooted in a much better way. Obviously, Core Designs originally created it for Eidos, and, you know, it had run its course. But it was during the PS2 era where I feel like that they kind of rethought the franchise, a franchise that I absolutely love and basically pass it over to Crystal Dynamics, which I think really took the franchise in a much needed, more modern way. And this is, for me, at least the start of that. Here's some more third person action platforming games. And again, I like seeing these here because you're just reminded of all the variety that came out on the PS2. Obviously some of these are multi-platform, also came out on the Xbox and the GameCube. But in my heart, this is where I remember playing these for the first time. And for the most part, there are a lot of really great examples of third person action games on this system. When I started my YouTube channel and started thinking about the content I would create for it, you know, one of my passions is finding hidden gems on systems, finding games that a lot of people don't necessarily know about, but are really good. And it was really easy for me to go to the PlayStation 2 library to find them because, well, just so many games were released for it. And it was really easy for some of them to kind of slide under the radar a little bit, even though they're really fun. And so here you see a bunch of games that I featured over the years that I do think are hidden gems. And, you know, for the most part, most people don't know about them. And again, super fun to play even today. Now I do want to mention the getaway and its sequel Black Monday. So these were really interesting and really fun GTA clones that came out at the time, but they had a sort of, I guess they were kind of inspired by Guy Ritchie's Snatch movie. Uh, and so they had their own kind of vibe to them. Uh, I love the fact that you could just drive around London, a place I've never been to. And it's a, it's a location that isn't often, you know, covered in video games. And so I thought it was really neat that it was a GTA-like open world, 
but it had its own sort of spin on, on the genre. Now you guys know me, you know I love racing games, and are you surprised to learn that I have 48 racing games just on the PlayStation 2? Of course you're not, because so many of them are awesome. Starting with Burnout. And you know, what do I say that I haven't said a million times over the last couple years, other than it is one of my all-time favorite arcade racing game series. It was groundbreaking and amazing on the PlayStation 2. Uh, I first got into it, I, I believe I played the original a little bit, but it was really Burnout 2 that really got Paul and I hooked. And of course, Burnout 3 Takedown just took it to the next level. I love that game, as well as Burnout Revenge, which added some interesting little tweaks here and there, but I think it's fantastic. And then of course you have a port of the PSP game there, Burnout Dominator, which again is really solid. This is an amazing, uh, amazing arcade racing series and we need a new one. It was also during this time period where I think that we got the best Need for Speed games, starting with Hot Pursuit 2, another game, <laughs> I, I, another game that I just can gush about for, for days and days again. So iconic at the time, the PS2 version we played for hundreds of hours, but then Underground 1 and 2 was really great as well. Of course you have to mention Gran Turismo 3 and 4. These games are, well, in many many people's eyes, they're considered masterpieces. I mean, they're, they're simulation racing games. And in many ways, I think the series really kind of came into its own here. Yes, the PS1 games were very special, uh, very groundbreaking for the time, but I really feel like the, 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 the Gran Turismo series was able to utilize the PS2 hardware in a way that really showed it off. Uh, again, these games are great. They're not some of my favorites because I don't play a lot of simulation games, but I did play these an awful lot at the time, and I still think they hold up. And Gran Turismo success inspired a bunch of other companies to you know, try their own hand at success here with their own simulation racing games. You see eight of them here, and you know, for the most part, they don't hold up to Gran Turismo, but there is some fun to be found in some of these titles. It was during this generation that I played a bunch of motocross and ATV games as well. Again, I was just all in on racing games during this generation, and uh, especially, you know, MX Unleashed. There's something about that game that, again, Paul and I just absolutely loved. Uh, I used to have a, a motorcycle as a kid, and so during this generation, it was fun to, to hop on one and you know race around a dirt track. Special mention needs to be made for Midnight Club 2, another game that, again, Paul and I would play for months and months on end. It was just different enough with its open world and its visual style and its control. Uh, it was different than every other racing game you're playing, but again, we were obsessed with it. As well as Splashdown, Rides Gone Wild, what I consider to be probably one of the greatest racing hidden gems ever made. I still think it holds up today. I love this game. And I've mentioned it before, it's because the tracks change every single lap. That was something with this game that I had never seen before. And it was just fun. It was just a really well-made, fun game. And again, so many racing games I could mention here. And as you see, that there is just no shortage of really awesome games. And while some of these did come out on the Xbox and the GameCube, and maybe they would technically run a little bit better there, but it was always the PlayStation 2 that I would come back to with that, you know, iconic controller. I don't know, it was just it was just an amazing place, an amazing console to have and just get so many racing games of every kind of variety, whether it be realistic or arcade or futuristic or somewhere in between, you know, combat games, destruction derby games, you had it all. All right, guys, well, as you can see here, I could go on and on and on about all of the amazing games that came out on the original PlayStation 2. Like I said, it is, it's my all time favorite console and you can see why. There's just no shortage of amazing games in every single genre. And I could spend another eight hours talking about every single game here. Just, you know, so many fun memories. But I would love to know down in the comments what are some of your fondest memories playing games on the PS2. And also let me know what games you think I am missing from the collection. Because this collection is far from complete. And as I mentioned, it's so easy to dig deep into the library and find all of those hidden gems, those games that 
for whatever reason, just didn't, you know, become as popular as probably they should be, but yet they are still really good. So let me know down in the comments. And as always, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and take care.